Hello, I'm Reverend Mark Nakagawa, West District Superintendent. It is a joy to be with you over this Thanksgiving weekend and especially in this Thanksgiving service. I come to you from the sanctuary of Centenary United Methodist Church in Little Tokyo. Please join me in the invocation. God eternal, creator and sustainer, we gather to give you thanks. We give you thanks for the beauty of the earth, the blessings of your creatures, the breeze and breath of life. Christ, redeeming and forgiving one, who is always faithful and merciful. We gather to give you thanks for peace calming the chaos of our souls, for hope restoring our faith, for renewal transforming our lives. Spirit, sustaining and compassionate one, who calls us into relationship with the living God, we give you thanks for caring when our hearts are aching, for friends supportive in time of need, for generosity lavish and overflowing. Holy One, three in one, we come with hearts full of gratitude for all things good. We give you thanks for you. Come, let us worship.
o ko kole ke kufanga i ngai fakataku ko toa pe ko se afaki ka ata ke fakamunua e ko loa ko laveai it is with deep respect and humility that i pay homage to god to all of you to the people of this land and their guardians i seek your permission to offer a few words in celebration and affirmation of God's faithfulness on this Thanksgiving day. In our vast diversity, the way we celebrate may be different, but we all join in Thanksgiving, especially in a time like this, for we are yet alive. As the, and as the words of the prophet Joel from our lectionary lesson proclaim, the Lord has done great things. The prophet Joel gives us a Thanksgiving hymn. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord your God has done great things. For the pastures of the wilderness are green, the trees bears its fruit, the fig tree and vine give their full yield. For he has given the early rain for your vindication, he has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. Set against a backdrop of locust, famine, and, and wrath, these words were like fresh showers and rains to Israel, as it is to us this day, for we are suffering from an emotional and spiritual famine. The abundance of our dining table this day cannot mask the fear and, in, and insecurity that pervades our current reality. Shrinking resources, material, emotional, and spiritual, was already the rule of the day, even before the arrival of a worldwide pandemic. Now, more than ever, we fear that the little security that we may have may be snatched away from us. A job, a home, a loved one, and oftentimes our answer to that anxiety is to engage in constant self-preservation and fortification to ensure that me, myself, and I is taken care of, only to experience greater anxiety and unrest. Joel calls us instead to look to God's promises of abundance. The God who gives rain for your vindication, and not just rain, it is abundant rain. The one that leads to super abundance of grain and to vats overflowing with wine and oil. The God of abundance has set before us, much like the one you are setting on your dinner table, a feast, and we shall eat in plenty and be fully and forever satisfied. Our challenge is to see the feast and join the feasting, even during this time of scarcity. Allow me to share about such a feast, a ritual of Thanksgiving, small tea, within the Tongan faith community and culture. The annual day of stewardship giving, known as Misinale or Tukumaui, is at its core a Thanksgiving celebration. Informed by what some Pacific Island theologians have called the theology of reciprocity and mutuality, that is the basis of Pacific Island relationships. God's ultimate incarnate gift of love came through the pain of the cross. In turn, we too must experience pain in giving our very best back to God. It is a call for us to give until it hurts. For we know that in this system of reciprocity, we can give all that we have, for God will give it back to us in our time of need. It is a tangible manifestation of one's mutual relationship with God. We do our part and God does God's part. The practice is widely known by two interchangeable words. The word missinale is the English word for missionary and reflects the early history of church giving when it was done to support the missionaries' work in the islands. The word tukumaui is literally translated to life offering, giving one's life back to God. At its core, the stewardship celebration is less about giving money but more about giving one's life as a practice of faith. It is a personal commitment, but practiced in the ways that Pacific Islander find most appropriate in community. As a practice of communal giving, families plan their year around this event. Often it is done in small group classes following John Wesley's concept of class meeting, 
where tithing is a part of the accountability of group members as they give account of their personal spiritual progress to one another. It is held during the latter part of the year, but the members live the entire year in discipleship, including finding intentional ways of saving, and each group finds the most suitable way for them to do their savings, be it fundraisings, monthly collection, whatever the means, but it is primary and non-negotiable, a standard form of discipleship. In fact, it is often said that the, that the group that gives the most money is the group that is most intentional about the spiritual discipline, including meeting regularly. On the day of the Missinale, they come usually with a big bag, literally and figuratively. They come dancing and singing into the sanctuary, bringing the fruits of their labor all year. A short sermon followed by the collection of tithing, which is a process of calling each member up, either as families or small class, who then bring their tithing in great celebration. Collected and tallied, the Missinale Day is not complete without a great big feast. Eating, testimonies, and dancing seal the day. A faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things unseen. The practice of missinale giving is certainly an act of faith. Giving to God what is due and having faith that the things not yet seen, tomorrow's dinner, tomorrow's gas money, next month's rent, money for the utility bills, good health for the family, provision for the children's future, and all other hoped for things will be provided by God in due time. In fact, in faith these past two years, Missinale all over our annual conference, from Hawaii to the mainland districts, have yielded increase in giving, even during this age of pandemic. In this time of shrinking resources, anxiety and restlessness, it is possible to sing the words of Joel's Thanksgiving hymn, and in so doing, turn away from our dependence on ourselves and depend on God's provision. This will free us up to give, not as the Tongans do in Missinale, but as a people of faith who give not out of scarcity, but out of God's abundance. Happy Thanksgiving. an inclusive modern affirmation of faith. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God, the creator of all things, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all we see and whose will is ever directed to the good of God's children. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and born in the flesh, the gift of God's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in times of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end, that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth as it is in heaven. Amen.
Ocio, greetings. I'm Gregory Douglas, pastor here at Native American United Methodist Church. I'd like to share with you today a confession, and then following that, the Lord's Prayer and Jalaki, or in Cherokee. I have with us today uh, some symbols of corn. These are likely things that will appear now in our classrooms, within our homes, possibly even within our churches. Like many symbols, they mean a variety of things to different peoples. I want to use them today as not only symbols of Creator God's blessings and gifts to us, but a call to confession. Let us share together. O oh, great and giving one, we come before you knowing that we have broken your great community in thought, word, and deed. In the symbol of corn you provided for your people. When strangers came to this land, your people generously provided for them, teaching them of the many gifts that have come from your hands. They welcomed them and showed them a feast of giving thanks. Yet, as people walked on in life, those gifts were forgotten, and the people betrayed turning thanksgiving into mourning. Forgive us for all the ways that we have not loved our relatives and restore us to walk in ways that show our thanks for all your gifts. As Jesus forgave those who turned from him, forgive us 
that we may walk your good path and honor you for your many gifts. Amen. Let us pray. Ogiro da gala de nihehi, gala kodiyu gesesti, de sadoi, sagui yuhi gesa, we ganam no goi, ani elohi winigasta, hada no setsogi, naski ya galala di sinagalisti ha, nida do wisa. Ogi listi yodi, sigi yosi gohiga. Digi eski oski korno, deski dogi yi. Naski ya, sidegi yot sine se sogi juji. Ale, se ledi, uda goli le dedi yi. Gesa, wide giski yadi niski torno nogi. Ski yu da leske skedi yu korni. Uyo. Yes, I. Sales testi gayeno. Sago we yo he. Yes, Sassy. A le. Sale gini digi. Gayesi. A le. Esta la quodio. Gesa. Nico he lo e. Amen. Amen. Our scripture lesson is Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 33. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lily of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed, your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Don't worry. How can we not worry? The world is so much more complicated, so much more dangerous than a do not worry, be happy theology. Every generation has its trouble and people in our time still lack sufficient food and have no clothes. We are still in the middle of a pandemic. We continue to battle racism, sexism, division. And my heart just breaks that the ability to have a civil conversation has evaporated. The ongoing stress of our current world has major effects on our health and mental health. Suicide rates are rising. In fact, the most prescribed medication in the United States is not heart or blood pressure medicines, but anti-anxiety and depression medicine. We are thankful we live in a time where there are therapies and medicines helping anxiety and depression. Don't worry about life and the stuff of this life. This scripture, while being an affront to me right now, also challenges me to shift my focus, calling me to place my energy and my focus on the author of life, God. 
This scripture challenges me to look to where my focus and what things do I trust in this life? I know God has taken care of creation and cares for us. In this part of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is telling his followers about the big picture. Jesus is inviting his followers to see their life in not just the context of the everyday needs and concerns and worries of what's before us. Jesus invites us to see our life as part of the unfolding story of the kingdom of God. In seeing and recognizing our lives as part of that unfolding story, we acknowledge God is the source and strength of our world. In seeking God first and not being caught up in the anxiety and striving for only the everyday, we become part of God's creative force, nurturing and bringing peace to all we worry and ruminate on. When we seek God first, we don't ignore or minimize the hurts and struggles and rocky ground of this life. In fact, when we seek God, we place the totality of our lives into God's big picture and plan for right relationships and redemption. Partnering with Jesus and building a world focused on the goodness God creates, we find these moments of palpable clarity when life emerges or erupts as God intended, moments where joy emerges and the Spirit of God connects people together with bonds so pure we value and love one another as God loves us. These moments don't deny the troubles and hurts, pains, struggles. They happen alongside and can even emerge from within deep grief, reminding us that the hurt and pain struggles are not the only life we are living. We live a much fuller and deeper life with glorious, beautiful moments of God's peace with us. And so we give thanks for these moments of pure, unadulterated joy and peace provided by God whose big picture includes all we worry about, all we are concerned about. So with a heart full of grateful, we can prepare for Thanksgiving, for the break from our normal routine of work to give thanks for the goodness, wholeness, reconciliation, and healing God spreads out before us like a beautifully set table.
let me share this benediction from the wisdom of our indigenous communities. This is an Apache blessing. May the sun bring you new energy every day. May the moon softly restore you by night. May the rain wash away your worries. May the breeze blow new strength into your being. May you walk gently through the world and know its beauty all the days of your life. Amen.